Hi, YouTubers. Something important. So I'm the garage again. Guess what? I'm I'm gonna be doing smoking a nice big ass cigar. Is the big ass cigar for life? The house of keeping. Smoking this uh, Sanchez Panza cigar. Nice big ass cigar. Anyway, the ore burner was on. I apologize for that. And it's also very windy outside. Ore burner went off. Uh, very damn windy outside, so I apologize for the wind also. You might hear the wind in the background. Uh, yeah, the camera might pick up a little bit of the wind, uh, so uh, it's very, very windy and rainy today. Uh, we were supposed to get it here in Massachusetts. Uh, Massachusetts, be so damn cold here, damn hot here, damn, damn, damn. Uh, we were supposed to get um, a lot of uh, snow today and also a lot of rain and snow. Uh, we ended up just getting a lot of rain, so... Uh, Anyway, so the cigar's already lit, already lit. I apologize I couldn't light the, the cigar on camera because, um, you know, I understand, you know, some people want to see me light the cigar on camera, but uh, it's, um, it's uh, way too windy for me to light the cigar. So I had to step back in the back of the garage and light the cigar with the lighter. So anyway, uh, that's a house of keeping. So anyway, uh, back to the video topic. So I've had a good day today. I, um, yeah, I slept late today. I slept at almost 10 o'clock today, uh, and then I woke up. Uh, I did some uh, shopping today at Roach Brothers here in Massachusetts. Be so damn cold here, damn hot here, damn, damn, damn. And, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, I did some shopping today. Nice big-ass shopping, like the big-ass cigar, that kind of crap, you know. And then, um, after doing the grocery shopping, uh, I came back to my parents' house, and, uh, yeah, kind of a quiet day it's been a kind of a dreary uh, kind of crappy shitty day you know kind of like a shitty day uh, not a very fun day to take a walk or anything uh, it's very very shitty outside so uh, yeah so back to what i was going to say um uh one person asked me to do a request topic uh, which I usually, FYI, for your information, I typically, you know, typically ask, like the big ass cigar, I typically don't take requests. Uh, I will occasionally do a request topic, but um, not all the time. So don't get the impression like, oh, he's gonna do this like every time. Um, but I typically don't do requests. But this is gonna be a um, request topic, which it actually is, how did I get into pipe and cigar smoking? So uh, somebody on my channel said, hey, Smoking Essie, how did you get into pipe and cigar smoking? How did you become a big ass cigar smoker, big ass pipe smoker? And I've, to I've told this story many times before because a lot of people say, hey, Smoking Essie, like why, you know, why do you smoke cigars? Why do you smoke pipes, you know? So I'll kind of tell the story right now. So basically, you have. So I'm almost 31. I'll be 31 next month, and essentially, if you go back in time about 13 years ago, actually over 13 years ago, um, to probably the somewhere in the the late fall, early winter of 2008, 2000, probably the late 2008 maybe around like Thanksgiving, Halloween of 2008. Essentially, I knew I was gonna turn 18 in 2009, and I was like, you know, I wanna do something special, you know, I wanna celebrate my, my birthday, and obviously I live in the United States. I live in the United States, so obviously, I, I can't drink alcohol when I'm 18, uh, you know, because obviously the legal drinking age is uh, 21 in the United States. I know in some countries like Europe, for example, England, Canada, it's 19 or 20 or 21 or 18, for example, or even 16, for example, or for example, there's no laws against, you know, drinking in the privacy of your own home. Um, I have viewers in Sweden. I have viewers in the UK. I have viewers in other countries like Germany, Spain, and, and the European Union is a lot more liberal with uh, alcohol. So, um, so yeah, uh, I know in the EU uh, the, or in Australia, there's no laws regarding, you know, 
uh, drinking in the privacy of your own home. Um, and essentially people drink all the time when they're 16 or 18, whatever. But essentially here in the United States, it's pretty much 21 period. It's pretty much 21 period. So you have to be pretty much 21 no matter what. So I knew for a fact that I couldn't drink alcohol when I was, when I was uh, 18. So the other thing you can do when you're 18 years old is you can, um, you can, you can do a couple things. Obviously you can vote. I obviously registered to, to vote. Um, not into politics, that kind of bullshit, you know. Um, I, you can also buy dirty stuff, you know. By dirty stuff, I mean porn. Uh, that's something I also did. <laughs> big ass cigar for life. Yeah, nice big ass porn for life. Just being silly ass like the big ass cigar. Obviously, not getting into that much because that's obviously not advertisement friendly. So, um, yes, yeah, one thing you can do is buy pornography when you're 18 years old. Uh, another thing you can do is buy lottery tickets or what people call lotto tickets. Some people call them lottery tickets. Some people call them scratch off tickets. Scratch Crash off cards. Some people call them lotto tickets. You know, um, I call them lottery tickets. That's what we call them here in Massachusetts. So, obviously, I bought you know lottery tickets when I was eighteen years old. Lotto tickets. Um, and then the other thing you can you can do a couple other things. Obviously, in some states you can buy a gun, which obviously I have no interest in buying a gun. It's like you know what I don't want a fucking gun. It's like you know what I am not a pro. I'm not into politics that kind of crap, you know. But I am not pro gun, so I have no interest in owning a gun. So um, no interest in firearms. You can also uh, when you're 18 do uh, do a couple other things. You can do many things when you're 18. Um, but anyway, in terms of in terms of uh, tobacco, I was like, you know what? I want to initially back in late 2008, I was like, you know, I want to smoke a cigar for my 18th birthday because I'll be, because back then, oh, I have to make a point of saying back then in two, you might say yourself smoking SE, the smoking age is 21. No, back in 2008 to 2009, the legal age was, um, was actually 18 years old on a nationwide. It wasn't until 2020 that President Trump signed into law uh, the uh, new law that makes it 21 nationwide. So uh, there were a few places back in like 2008, 2009, it was 21 uh, but or like 19, but the vast, vast, vast majority of places uh, in Massachusetts uh, were, um, this were damn cold, you're damn hot, you're damn, damn, damn. Uh, um, the vast majority of places were 18 years old. 18 years old to buy uh, tobacco products. Vast majority of places in Massachusetts. Uh, so, I was like, oh, what the hell? It's like, you know, I want to have a cigar for my 18th birthday. And so, I told my, you know, I, I told my parents, like, okay, I want to have a cigar for my, bur my birthday. They were like, okay. And you might say to yourself, smoking ass, you like, how the hell did your parents react? It's like, you know, because a lot of parents are hell of a lot of parents, a hell of a lot of parents are super, super anti-tobacco, you know, they're like, I don't want you smoking, I don't want you in any way smoking, even if you're 18 years old, you're living in my house, I don't want you smoking at all, and my parents were actually very, very uh, easy going, they're like, hey, you can't smoke inside our house, you know, you can't smoke inside, um, you know, you can smoke on the deck, you know, we're smoking in the garage, but you can't smoke out, you know, inside the actual house itself, and obviously I lived with my parents until I was 25 years old, which a lot of people say, hey, why the hell do you live with your parents until you're 25 years old? That's super weird. Don't most people go to college when they're 18 years old? I'll get into that a little bit later. So, so, so yeah, around like Thanksgiving of 2009, I wanted to smoke a cigar for my 18th birthday. So I was planning on buying a, you know, a cheap cigar. And I know somebody in my family was like, don't inhale, Evan. You know, you're going to get sick if you inhale. And, uh, yeah. And then, um, starting around December 2008, uh, this is when I was in high school. I was a senior in high school. Um, I was like, you know what? I actually want something that will get, that's going to last longer than one smoke. Because obviously a cigar, once it's gone, it's gone. Uh, once you buy one cigar, it's gone. So uh, I was like, you know what? I want to smoke 
a pipe, a tobacco pipe, a tobacco pipe um, on my 18th birthday. So around Christmas of 2008, I was like, you know what? I think I'll smoke a pipe instead, a tobacco pipe. I want to make that very clear, a tobacco pipe, not a pot pipe or anything like that or anything stupid like crack or anything like that. So anything dumbass like that, you know. So, yeah, so I was like, okay, I want to smoke a tobacco pipe <clears throat> on my 18th birthday, a tobacco pipe, and, you know, my family members like, you know, you just don't inhale because you'll get sick if you inhale, and so the months went by, and obviously I had a valid uh, photo ID, I had what's called a Massachusetts identification card, which said my, you know, my date of birth, and then I believe uh, the months went by, and my, um, you know, my dad and I talked about a nice big ass dad, like the big ass cigar. You know, we talked about, you know, where to buy, um, you know, the pipe, you know, on my 18th birthday, because that was going to be my, you know, my big present for my 18th birthday. And we were like, maybe the tip, you know, the typical ass liquor store in town. But we were like, yeah, they don't have a whole, they have, they have cigars, but they don't have a whole lot of like pipe stuff, you know. And something I actually found out later on about, well, if my birthday's in April, about um, on eight months after my birth, eight or nine months after my birthday, I actually found out that that, that liquor store in town, I'm not gonna, not gonna mention the name because that's doxing, obviously, but um, I'll just say that that liquor store in town, they don't take that form of ID that I had back then. So uh, I could have gotten rejected. I actually got rejected once, not because I, was, I wasn't old enough, but because I had what's called an invalid ID. So, um, Essentially, there's kind of like a weird law in Massachusetts or Massachusetts that um, liquor stores and like restaurants are only required to accept a driver's license or a liquor ID card, which is what I have now, a liquor ID card. I don't drive myself. So for people who don't drive, it's a liquor ID card. Some places will take a passport or a military ID, but the vast majority of places will only take, the vast majority of um a lot, or, or I should say a lot of them will only take a driver's license or liquor ID. And the reason is it has to do with some kind of safe harbor. If it was found they accidentally sold to somebody underage, they get some form of safe harbor under the Massachusetts general laws. So, and uh, so yeah. Um, so it was actually good that we didn't go to that store to, uh, buy, uh, to buy, um, to buy the, uh, pipe. So we decided to go to uh, the store that I go, I go to now. Oh, sorry, YouTubers. There's somebody walking by. Just give me one sec. One sec, YouTubers. One sec. One sec. One sec. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, so uh, back to what I was saying. Uh, so yeah, it's actually good we didn't go to that liquor store. We went to a different uh, place, uh, uh, not a liquor store. We went to uh, a tobacco store, which is the tobacco store I go to now, uh, called Watch City Cigar. Uh, and that's in Framingham, Mass. I Massachusetts, you know, be so damn cold here, damn hot here, damn, damn, damn. So, uh, yeah, that's where we went um, to buy my first pipe. And, yeah, so we planned the trip, and essentially what happened was on the day I turned 18 years old, not going to mention my date of birth, obviously that's private, um, essentially on the day I turned 18 years old, essentially... Um, I came home from high school, but I was still in high school back then. Oh, sorry, he's farted. Yeah, big ass farts for life. I turned, you know, 18 years old that day. I came home from high school, but I was still in high school. I was still a senior in high school. Obviously, that's the day I turned 18 years old, so I was considered legal. And I, um, you know... I, um, you know, my dad and I went to the, 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 the cigar store and walked City Cigar, and um, basically, <clears throat> you know, we went there, and before going in, my dad kind of kind of gave me the talk, you know, about, like, you understand by doing this, you're taking a risk of becoming addicted, you know. 
you are taking because my dad is <clears throat> my dad is a <clears throat> excuse me my dad is a, for, a former cigarette smoker you know for many years you realize by doing this you're taking a risk of your health you know you're risking your health and you're also risking becoming addicted you know I was like yeah I'm I'm aware of that you know I'm I'm aware of that I'm taking a risk here you know I'm okay it's like okay I just want you to be aware of that because you know, obviously smoking is the number one preventable cause of death. And also, you know, it's it, it can be super, 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 super addictive, you know. It can be become a terrible habit. So uh, not so much cigars and pipes, but more cigarettes. Uh, so, so I go into the, the tobacco store uh, and I'm not going to mention who is working there because obviously that's doxing, you know, or, or not doxing, but just revealing. It's not really doxing. It's more revealing people's personal information, which I'm, I'm not going to do. So uh, people ask me to say names. I'm not going to name names, okay? So I walked in there. That was the first time I'd ever been in that uh, tobacco store because obviously uh, uh, it's, you know, it's a tobacco store. And uh, essentially I go in the store and I, I go up to the counter and say, I'm looking to buy my first pipe. Uh, and my first tobacco, I've never smoked before in my life. Because keep in mind, something I want to mention right now. <clears throat> excuse me. I just had lunch. Um, something I want to mention right now is people might say, well, smoking assy, yes, you turned 18 years old. Yeah, you were legal. But you probably had a cigarette before you were 18 years old. It's like, you know, most people have a cigarette or a cigar or a pipe before they turn 18 years old or pot, whatever. It's like, you know, you probably smoked before you were 18 years old. And the answer is I actually never did. Honestly. Honestly. I never even had a puff of a cigarette in high school. I never even had a puff. I The only thing I... I mean, I was exposed to smoke a lot when I was... When I was younger, and don't think that's like child abuse, whatever. It's like it wasn't like my parents were smoking in the house, but um, a lot of my family smoked, you know. And I used to go over to like events and you know functions and parties, and you know there'd be people smoking on the deck, whatever. It's like you know my grandparents smoked. It's like you know yeah, it's like you know I was around it, you know around sec you know secondhand smoke, you know. But I never smoked myself. See, a lot of people, a hell of a lot of people, you know, try a cigarette in high school, and usually they get sick. It's like, you know, usually they take a puff off a cigarette, they get sick, they throw up, you know, and they get really, like, whatever. Because contrary to popular belief, you usually don't get hooked on your first cigarette. Usually you go, after, you know, going back a couple times, that's when you start to get hooked. Because it's like, you know... There are a lot of people who might, you know, take like a puff off a cigarette and say, bleh, it's like, that's disgusting. Same thing with chewing tobacco. Uh, and a lot of times, same thing with marijuana, you know. Or burner. So, uh, yeah, it's like, you know, a lot, a hell of a lot of people, you know, try a cigarette uh, or try a joint or try uh, a dip in high school uh, and they get sick. They never want to try it again. It's like, you know, uh, so I had never tried tobacco in any way, shape or form uh, prior to being... 18 years old. I never even taken a puff off a cigarette, you know. Um, so yeah, I go up to the counter and say, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I've never smoked before. I guess looking for my first pipe and my first um, tobacco. And the guy at the cigar store watched the cigar says, yeah, um, you probably want something mild for tobacco. Okay, you want something mild. Um, he sold me a basket pipe, basically this little briar pipe, little, little basket pipe. I think it cost $35, if I remember right, and the tobacco cost like $10, and my dad put it on, uh, my dad put on his, uh, you know, his card, you know, his debit card, whatever, and it was, I think it was like $35 in total, and um, then... Uh, you know, we bought the, the tobacco, we bought the pipe cleaners, and we were driving home. It was a very rainy day, actually kind of like today. It was a very rainy day. I remember saying to my dad, like, you know, like, what is it going to be like when I smoke for the first time? Because, again, I had never smoked anything, anything, period. I had never smoked pot. I had never smoked tobacco. I had never smoked herbs. I had never smoked anything stupid like, you know, 
hardcore drugs. It's like, you know, well, anything stupid like that. I, I, think, I, I think hardcore drugs are absolutely stu stupid, uh, absolutely dumb. It's like, you know, who the fuck wants to smoke, you know, crack, whatever. It's like, you know, uh, I think it's stupid as hell. So, uh, so uh, that's just my personal belief on, um, on hardcore drugs. You know, hardcore drugs like meth and crack and heroin, uh, I think it's just, in coke, it's just stupid in general, so uh, I think it's incredibly stupid people even do that crap, it's like, you know, uh, like, what's so cool about putting a needle in your arm, it's like, you know, so stupid and idiotic, so, uh, anyway, um, so yeah, um, my dad's like, eh, it's gonna be kind of interesting when you try your first cigar, try your first pie, but I don't, you may like it, you may not like it, I mean, if, if you don't like it, it's, it's a waste of $40, but there's only one way to find out, so then, uh, then we came home to, to my house in Massachusetts. It'd be so damn cold here, damn hot here, damn, damn, damn. And uh, yeah, so we stood on the deck, you know, up there. You've probably seen the deck before, you know, the deck, not the deck, uh, the deck, you know, the deck uh, up there. And, uh, you know, we, we stood on the, de the deck uh, and I just couldn't initially get the pipe lit. It's like, you know, uh, uh, f first off, I was actually kind of nervous around the lighters in the match because, uh, you know, like lighters like this, uh, First off, we weren't even using um, a Bic lighter, not a Dick lighter, a Bic lighter. Uh, we were using, um, I think, a, a, a lighter that they sell. It's kind of like a disposal lighter. Uh, they sell at that place. And uh, we also had matches. And um, yeah, so, I mean, I was kind of nervous. It's like, because I wasn't a big fan of using lighters and matches. It's like, you know, because I didn't want to fucking burn myself, you know, so. So, uh, I was kind of nervous. It's like, you know, uh, about using a, a hot flame, like a hot like lighter that could burn me. So, uh, initially after trying to get it lit myself, I was like, yeah, I don't want to do this because I, I don't want to get burned. It's like, you know, uh, you know, my dad said, okay, he kind of got it lit for me. And that was probably the first time he had, you know, smoked himself since he quit smoking when I was a little kid. And, you know, so he... Um, he got lit for me and that I, I started puffing on the pipe myself. So obviously, uh, you know, we were, you know, sharing the same stem in a way, you know, it's like, you know, the stem of the pipe. And obviously that's kind of gross, you know, but obviously we, we weren't sick or anything like that. You know, we didn't have any kind of sickness. Uh, this was obviously, you know, this was years and years and years before COVID. Uh, so this was year, years before COVID hit. So uh, there was no concern about COVID, you know, back then. So a coronavirus. Uh, So, essentially, you know, I started, you know, you know, taking a puff off the pipe and this little basket, basket pipe with this tobacco called Eureka. Um, and essentially, essentially, I was like, you know, the first thing I think I did, I just remember it, it tasting like hot gas, not farts, like hot gas, like like almost like if you sit, stand next to a car and you inhale the exhaust fumes, not on purpose, but you breathe in the exhaust fumes or like the exhaust fumes. I just thought it tasted like, like hot gas. And you know, there wasn't much, I wasn't, I wasn't even, even remotely thinking about like the flavor, the taste, the aroma, you know, it just tastes like, like hot gas. It's like, you know, like hot gas, you know, and I think we got the pipe, the tobacco burning way too hot. Uh, it was burning way too hot, probably really bitey, you know, uh, bites the crap out of your tongue, the shit out of your tongue. And um, so I just, you know, started puffing a little bit. Uh, and it's like, initially I was holding the pipe like this, uh, as opposed to the side of my mouth, uh, which you're supposed to hold the pipe on the side of your mouth like this. Uh, but I was holding like this, uh, like, and really quick puffs, you know, which is how most people start smoking a pipe. Uh, and, and I mean, we just couldn't get the damn thing to say lit. I mean, we just couldn't get the damn thing to say lit. And, you know, I, I coughed a couple of times, I definitely. I mean, I coughed a couple of times, you know, initially when I, you know, tried my first pipe, you know, tobacco pipe. Yeah, I, I coughed a few times. And I was like, you know, 
initially I was like, yeah, this is probably not going to be for me. It's like, you know, probably not going to be for me. For me. Uh, and keep in mind, I was only initially planning a, when I started smoking a pipe or smoking a cigar. I, I was only initially planning on smoking on average two, three, four, five, six times a year. Like once at Christmas, once at New Year's, once at Thanksgiving, uh, once on 4th of July, uh, like half a dozen times a year. I was not planning on becoming a current everyday smoker, which is very common. Uh, that's how most people start off is like, you know, uh, you know, most people start off, you know, okay, I'll smoke this like once in a while. But it's like, you know, and then I think what happened was after I couldn't get to say lit, um, essentially I went down to the garage here, which is, this is, this is our garage here. We had a, a different garage door back then. It was a different color back then. It was the same door, but it was a, it was painted a different color back then. Oh, ash fell. Damn. Damn ash. <sighs> Crap. Um... So, yeah, um, so yeah, um, so yeah, I went to the garage, and I finally got the, the thing to say lit, the damn pipe to say lit, tobacco pipe, um, and I finally was just puffing it like, like this, uh, kind of like this, uh, like that, uh, and, um, obviously the pipe got way too spitty, you know, uh, way too much saliva, probably pipe juice, and uh, yeah. And then I remember that same day we went out to dinner for my birthday, and um, and yeah, so uh, we, went to, we, we went out to dinner, uh, and I was like, yeah, I don't feel addict addicted or anything like that. And, um, and yeah, so that's how the first time I smoked a pipe, a tobacco pipe, and then I think probably maybe three to five days afterwards, I was like, you know what, I might smoke my, my pipe again. And that's how it kind of started. It was it was kind of like initially a couple times a week, maybe once or twice a week. And then I think going forward, this is kind of getting to a different topic. I'm not gonna get too much into this. Then initially, after that, um, I was kind of frustrated with the damn pipe because I couldn't get it to say lit. And I was like, you know, this is really irritating. And I think what I ended up doing to kind of make it comfortable for me because I was kind of nervous with the damn lighter, you know. Uh, you know, kind of nervous using a, uh, a regular disposable lighter. I, I was not comfortable at all with using matches. Uh, at all using matches at all. Uh, back then I was not comfortable at all using matches. Uh, because I was scared to death of getting burned for, for good reasons. And uh, so instead I ended up buying, I think it was at Stop and Shop probably, I bought a, a barbecue lighter actually, a barbecue lighter, like the lighter you use to, um, or to use like a barbecue, because that way I didn't have to hold the flame cl close to my finger. And I, I just, you know, essentially used it to light the uh, pipe. And that's how I felt comfortable and you can use a barbecue lighter for a pipe, absolutely. What you want, I actually get a lot of questions about this, you know, and I can't glorify in any way, shape, or form, but I mean, essentially a lot of people ask me, hey, Smoking Assy, like, are you, is it okay to use a Bic lighter? Is it okay to use, um, is it okay to use uh, this lighter or this lighter? Actually, the answer to that for, for myself is, I can use pretty much anything to light a pipe. Uh, essentially, I can't, again, I can't glorify this in any way, shape, or form because of YouTube's policies uh, nowadays, but essentially, the only thing I would never use to light a pipe myself or a cigar is a Zippo lighter. A Zippo lighter is a big, 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 big no-no in terms of the world of pipe smoking, cigar smoking, because Zippo lighters have a fuel that smells like gasoline, essentially. It's not gasoline, actually. Essentially, this this um, this get this uh, fuel the Zippo lighters use this lighter fuel. Uh, it's not something you want around your cigars and pipes. Zippo lighters are no no. Um, but in terms of like other lighters, you do, you do not have to. Uh, for myself, I'm speaking for myself because I'm not glorifying any way, shape, or form. Uh, um, for myself, you do not have to buy a two hundred dollar lighter to smoke a pipe or smoke a cigar. Essentially, 
I can use, or anyone anyone can use a Bic lighter, not a Dick lighter, but a Bic lighter for a cigar or a pipe. Doesn't matter. Bic lighters are fine because they run on what's called butane, and butane is odorless. Anything odorless like butane or like matches, like like matches, are fine because matches are sulfur, and butane is a, like a Bic lighter or like a disposable lighter or like a refuelable light, like a torch. That's totally fine. You do not want to use, or I, I do not want to use uh, Zippo lighters. Zippo lighters, I've tried them a couple of times. They are a no-no. They ruin the taste. So yeah, um, so I ended up using a barbecue lighter for a while and I think it was in May of 2009 that I ended up uh, buying my first cigars. And you might say so, Smokey Assy, in terms of the big ass cigars, what was your first big ass cigar? And the answer is it was not a handmade cigar. No way in hell. My first, um, my first uh, cigar was a Dutch Masters. And I can't remember if it was a Dutch Masters grape or a Dutch Masters strawberry berry. It was, this was back when flavored tobacco was, was legal before the bullshit ban, which I think is bullshit in general. That's, what, that's my personal opinion, like my asshole. It's bullshit. Um, but I mean, this is back when flavored tobacco and menthol cigarettes were legal. And this is even before they signed into law the Family Smoking Prevention Tobacco Control Act, because that took effect in September 2009 and was passed in June of 2009. So even back then, you could get flavored cigarettes. It's like, now granted, there weren't a whole lot of flavored cigarettes. Flavored cigarettes weren't a big thing. Uh, there was the DeJarms or DeHarms, there was the Nash Shermans, and then there was CAO had a couple of them. But um, flavored cigarettes were kind of like a, whatever, you know, they were kind of like, um, I don't know. So I, I never tried the actual real flavored cigarettes. And I'll get into that a little bit later. So, I buy, I can't remember if it was a Dutch Master's Grape, I think it was a Dutch Master's Strawberry Berry, and I went to my local gas station, and I bought, um, I bought, I think, like, half a dozen uh, Dutch Master uh, cigars, or some people call them cigarellos, I call them cigars, you call them cigarellos, you call them tobacco blunts or little cigars, I say tomato, you say tomato. I'm not going to get into cigar bigotry, you know, cigar, you know, all that bullshit about like, you know, oh, that's like blasphemy calling that a cigar, you know, whatever. I call them cigars. So essentially, yeah, I um, get my first um, cigar and you, you can bet your ass like the big ass cigar. The guy carded me. He carded me. He carded me. He checked my ID because back then I looked very different than I do now. I had earrings. Uh, not because I'm gay, because I'm not gay for the last time, but um, because I, I had my ears pierced. I looked I looked very different back then. I mean, if you see my first videos from 2010, I mean, I looked very different back then. It's like, you know, and the guy definitely checked my fucking ID. It's like, you know. So I, in the Dutch Masters, in like the machine-made cigars, you don't have to cut them, obviously, because they're machine-made. So, you know, um, I took actually a toothpick, a toothpick, and stuck it into the cigar. You know, we used to have a little container of toothpicks and stuck it into the cigar to make a little hole. Didn't sound right. And essentially, you know, I'd smoke one of those, and I would smoke probably one or two of those a week, and I would buy those at the gas station uh, downtown near where I live. Not going to say where I live. So, uh, yeah. And then I probably would go through a couple of those a week, you know. And then I think it was in May of 2009 also. <clears throat> excuse me. I bought my first pack of cigarettes. Now, I was never a big time cigarette smoker. And thank God I did not get hooked. Thank God I did not get hooked on cigarettes. 
Um, my first pack of cigarettes was Newport Mediums, or as they're called now, Newport Blues. This is before the law in 2010 that made it so companies can't say medium, light, low tar, ultra light, that kind of stuff. So this is back when you were allowed to legally sell them as Newport Mediums. They were a little the shorties, and I smoked one of those on the deck. And yeah, so I don't know. I mean, my first, my first, re out, my first reaction to a cigar was I liked it. I, I liked it a lot more than the pipe because it was easier to smoke. You know, I actually just took the the barbecue lighter and, and just burned the, the end of it, and then you know that's how I got it lit. Because again, I was really scared about getting burned. It's like you know, and uh, yeah, and then. Uh, um, then I tried my first cigarette, um, which was a Newport Medium. And then I think I, from there, I kind of, for a while, I was just smoking cigarettes because they were easy to smoke. And people might say, oh, you were a big time cigarette smoker, you know, a pack a day smoker, you know, two pack a day smoker. You were inhaling, you know, you were going through, you know, 25 cigarettes a day. No way in holy hell. It's like, you know, I was probably going through an average two cigarettes a day, two cigarettes, not two packs, two cigarettes a day. And thank God I did not get hooked because cigarettes are fucking disgusting. So yeah, I think my next pack of cigarettes was Newport Lights. Um, yeah, Newport uh, Lights, which are, they're called Newport Golds now. And that was my uh, second um, pack of cigarettes I bought. And then I was on vacation in Vermont over the summer 2009 or June of 2009. And um, yeah, and I ended up um, buying at the, um, I ended up buying at the gas station up there in Vermont. I ended up buying a, a pack of cool, cool cigarettes, K-O-O-L, cool cigarettes. Um, which cigarettes are, are far from cool. They're definitely not cool. So uh, do not start. If you are not a cigarette smoker, you're not a smoker in general, don't start. It is not a good addiction to start. Absolutely do not start. It is a ter <clears throat> terrible addiction, as you can plain see. So uh, terrible addiction. You're not a smoker. Do not start. This is not in any way, shape, or form to encourage anybody to start smoking. This is purely me recounting my uh, own experiences. Do not start. It is a terrible, horrible addiction, and you will live a much, 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 much more happier life if you do not smoke. So yeah, I smoked, uh, I, I bought a pack of cool, cool uh, green menthol, and keep in mind, a pack of cigarettes back then would last me like three weeks. It's like two and a half to three weeks, because I was only going through one or two a day, one or two individual cigarettes, not one or two packs. So yeah, and then um, I think over the summer of 2009, I had, to, I had to quit smoking once over that summer because I was going in for a procedure. I had to go in for some kind of medical procedure back then. And then the fall, I had to go in for my wisdom teeth. I had to get my wisdom teeth out. And obviously it's a very bad idea when you have any kind of tooth pulled, including your wisdom teeth especially, to smoke because you don't want to get a dry socket. And essentially... I had to quit smoking for my medical procedure um, for about two weeks, and I had to quit smoking for my wisdom teeth for about three and a half to four weeks, or three three weeks or so. And essentially, I didn't get any withdrawals. I didn't feel any hunger, any moodiness. I wasn't bitchy. I didn't, you know, feel like, you know, anger or whatever, you know. I wasn't pissed, you know. It's, it's more something I just... I kind of just sat on my parents' deck, you know, not my parents' dick, but my parents, that didn't sound right. That didn't sound right. My parents' deck and um, just, you know, you know, popped, you know, popped a couple cigarettes. And I ended up, I think I bought a pack of Salem Ultralights also. They're called Salem Silvers now. And I hated Ultralight cigarettes. I absolutely hated, you know, my mom, when she was a social smoker, when she was my age probably or younger, uh, probably much younger than me. You know, she smoked uh, cigarettes socially, uh, 
and she loved like ultralight and light cigarettes. And I hated uh, ultralight cigarettes. I hated them. I was like, they taste like chalk. It's like, you know, it's like smoking chalk. Um, it's disgusting. I mean, I was not a fan of ultralight cigarettes. And keep in mind also, I was not inhaling. I like Bill Clinton. I was not inhaling. Yeah, Bill Clinton, nice big ass Bill Clinton, like the big ass cigar. I was not inhaling. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I thought ultralight cigarettes were disgusting. I mean, uh, I ended up throwing away the entire pack because uh, I smoked one of them. I was like, I freaking hate this. It's like, you know, uh, and then, uh, and then, so uh, my, you know, my go-to cigarette back then, uh, I had a pipe here and there. I had a cigar here and there. Uh, you know, and I think back in um, the fall of 2009, I actually cut down to one cigarette a day, not one, not, not one pack, but one individual cigarette. And yeah, that was what I did. I would sit on my, my parents' deck after I came home from uh, my program back then, you know, my uh, school program, because obviously I didn't go to college directly after high school. Um, I'll tell that story a different time. I would just, you know, sit on my parents' deck, have, you know, one individual cigarette, and that was it, you know, and that's what I would do. And then, I think it was around November of 2009, um, essentially, I kind of got bored of smoking. I think part of the reason I got bored of smoking cigarettes was it was getting cold outside, and I was like, do I really want to be in the garage, you know, with all this cigarette smoke around, this nasty-smelling cigarette smoke around me? I was kind of like, you know, no way in hell. It's like, you know, I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to go back to, you know, go back to smoking the pipe. And that's when I, I essentially uh, gave up, you know, give, smoking cigarettes uh, on a daily basis. And then, and then how, um, then I, for my, for Christmas of 2009, I bought um, my hookah. You've probably seen those videos from years ago, or when it went off, of me smoking my hookah, obviously for tobacco use only, obviously for tobacco use only. And, you know, I, I, I got a hookah, a hookah uh, for, for Christmas, and that's what I smoked. Um, I really like, for a period of like three, three to six months, I was really, really into smoking the hookah, and hookah, just an FYI, is horrible for you. Absolutely terrible for you. It's probably just as bad as cigarettes because number one, you're supposed to inhale it. You're supposed to inhale a hookah. You're not supposed to inhale cigars. You're not supposed to inhale pipes. You're not supposed to inhale cigarellos. And hookah, you are absolutely supposed to inhale very deeply. And yeah, I mean, I would smoke the hookah, the hookah probably once a day and yeah. It was kind of, um, yeah, I kind of enjoyed. It. I would actually sit in the garage and have like a cup of tea or a cup of coffee. Because I was obviously I was too, I was still too young uh, to have alcohol. So, I would have uh, like a cup of tea or a cup of uh, coffee uh, or like lemonade, for example, and I would. Um, read a book. I was actually really big into reading the Harry Potter books back then, um, the Harry Potter books, and I would read the Harry Potter books while I would uh, smoke a pipe or smoke a hookah, you know, and that's what I would do, you know, back in like the winter of 2010, and then fast forward to January 8th of 2010, that's when I started my YouTube channel, that's when I made my first video. Now, a lot of people say, Smoking Assy, I can't seem to find your first couple videos on YouTube, and that's because I made a lot of them private. Unfortunately, I'll kind of be private about this, but um, essentially, I was going through kind of a rough time back then. I had some mental health issues, and I, I, I said a lot of stuff that I don't really, I'm really not proud of saying on that channel, on the channel. I, I said a lot of stuff on that, um, on the first couple videos. Uh, let's just say I <clears throat> said some things that I'm not really that proud of, 
and it's not like I was doxing people or being mean to people, or being a total jerk to people, you know. It was nothing like trolling. It wasn't like I was trolling anybody, but it was like I was um, essentially, I said some things I'm not really super proud of. I won't really get into what I, was say I said back then. Let's just say I said some things regarding certain whatever, and... Uh, I made a couple of those videos. My very first video I made private because, uh, number one, it was shitty quality. It was a shitty quality video. You do not want to watch it. It's stupid. It's dumb. Um, I mean, first off, I don't even introduce myself as Evan or Smoking Essie. I introduce myself as my old channel. And next off, I mean, I'm an immature, immature 18-year-old. It's like, you know, it's a crappy quality video. You do not want to watch it. It's a private video now. Um, I mean, it's like, it's just a dumb video. So, uh, and I mean, it's just me smoking a pipe and uh, yeah, so that's my first video I made. Uh, and that's how I started my, uh, my, my YouTube channel. And then the other thing I tried in 2010 was the nasal snuff and the, you know, the nasal snuff back then, uh, which was uh, something I tried. And I actually liked that for quite some time. I actually was a big fan of the, the dry snuff and the, the nasal snuff. Now, when I say snuff, I'm not talking about chewing tobacco or dipping tobacco or moist snuff, like the, the tobacco you chew. I'm talking about the old powdered tobacco they use in colonial days. So that's what I would, I would actually use. And I didn't, you know, obviously put it in my mouth. I put it, you know, I, you know, sniffed it, you know, and yeah. So I, I was a, I was a, you know, pretty avid user of, you know, nasal snuff for a couple of years. And, um, and yeah, and then, you know, that's kind of how the whole thing started. So, and then, you know, you fast forward all these years later and yeah, I'm, st I'm going on 13, 13 years, 13 years. I, th I think it was around probably, probably around 2011 or so, 2012, I kind of got bored of the hookah, you know, I kind of got bored of the snuff, you know, and I was like, you know, the snuff, the, the, a lot of people ask me, I have, I have a subscriber named Clay Hunter, you know, uh, I don't think he meant, he, 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 I don't think he cares if I mention his name, uh, um, who always says, hey man, uh, you know, hey man, you should try snuff again, you know, uh, you know, you used to do snuff all the time, you know, uh, it's like, I, I honestly hate snuff now, uh, I haven't used snuff since uh, 2015, uh, and I'm not going to plan on going back to it because number one, uh, you really can't buy it anymore. It's like you know, it's I mean, the flavor tobacco is illegal because of the bullshit ban, uh, and also you can't import it really. So uh, it's like I don't, I have no interest in using snuff, uh, and the uh, the snuff. Uh, I will tell you this, even if hypothetically it was legal to buy, uh, which it's still legal to possess, but not legal to buy. Uh, I probably wouldn't use it because honestly, what I what I ended up finding uh, was it was really gross. I mean, uh, the handkerchiefs that I would use for the snuff uh, got really nasty. I think we ended up just throwing them out uh, because they were beyond repair. I mean, you couldn't even wash them. They were really nasty. It's also really germy. Uh, I mean, I I mean honestly, and people can be. Uh, be a jerk to me and say like oh do you realize the snuff so much better than you know smokeless is so much better than you know smoking um yeah i think that the snuff is gross it makes you sneeze it turns your boogers brown gives you snuff boogers it's really really gross i mean it makes you sneeze uh, I found, I ended up getting, you know, like, brown nasal mucus during the day. It was really gross. It's like, you know, the hookah, it's like, because I don't inha inhale, because I'm not somebody who inhales, it's like, there's no point in smoking it. It's like, you know, it used to burn the hell out of my, the, my throat, really used to irritate the shit out of my throat, you know. It was really, I mean, the hookah, also the hookah is terrible for you. It's really, really terrible for you. Um, so thank God I quit smoking the cigarettes. Thank God I, I quit smoking the hookah. And really thank God I, I, I stopped, you know, uh, using snuff, you know. I mean, and then by about 2012, 2013, 
the only things I was smoking was the pipe and the cigars. And that's how I am nowadays is pipes, cigars. That's all I smoke, tobacco pipes, tobacco cigars. A lot of people ask me like, hey, Smokey Assy, have you ever tried marijuana? Will you ever try marijuana? You know, marijuana's legal now. And honestly, I, I, it's something I, I'm not gonna do. It's like, you know, uh, I've never tried marijuana in my life. I have no interest in trying marijuana. Um, in terms of other stuff, other stuff in my opinion is dumb. There's no point in using acid, mushrooms. There's no point in using crack, heroin, coke, all that stupid dumb stuff, you know, that junk. It's like, you know, I mean, no offense to people who use that stuff. It is stupid as hell in my opinion. All that dumb, hardcore drug stuff, you know. It's like, you know, and yeah, I'm not saying marijuana is stupid. I mean, it has a lot of medicinal benefits, you know, but oh, the ash fell, shit, ah, crap. Sorry. Um, but I mean, I mean, I think, yeah, it's like, you know, believe me, I'm not saying pot is stupid. I mean, yeah, I have no problem with people smoking pot, but come on, dude. I mean, heroin, coke, all that super addictive stuff is stupid as, as hell. It's like, you know, um, and I mean, yeah, so no, no interest in any, uh, any of that junk. So, and uh, I understand I have some subscribers who use recreational drugs. It's like, yeah, no interest in any of that junk. So, um, and yeah, I mean, believe me, I'm somebody who is in full support of legalization of recreational drugs, period. But not any, I, I just would never touch anything, anything besides cigars and pipes. Big ass cigars, big ass pipes. It's like, no way. I think all that hardcore drug stuff is horrible. It's it's terrible. It's absolutely fucking horrible. So, I guess I guess the way I'll end off this video is I'm at fifty one minutes. Fifty one minutes is is people might say, "Hey, smoking acid after almost thirteen years, like what health effects do you have? Like you know, you smoke every single day." You know, you smoke every single day. You don't inhale. What, what are your health effects after all this time? And the health effects I have is a morning cough. I wake up, I have a morning cough. And I also I also have uh, some conge a little bit of irritation in my mouth and throat. And that's about it. So I do get uh, quite a bit of congestion in the morning. And that's probably, and that's obviously from smoking. So, and that's a good reason why smoking is not good for you. And this story is by no means, like I said before, to glorify or encourage people. It's merely me accounting or reaccounting re my experience. This is not to glorify or encourage or suggest. I mean, because honestly, if you're not somebody who uses tobacco, don't start. It's not a good addiction to start. It's a terrible addiction. Even the cigars, <clears throat> the cigars and the pipes, have their risks. It's you know, it's not as bad as the cigarettes, but it's like, it's not something that's a great thing to start. I mean, I mean, really, any kind of drug, whether it's legal or illegal, is not a good. Th I mean, ideally, you should be completely drug free whether it's prescribed, whether it's um, recreational, whether it's tobacco, whether it's coffee, you should never use any sort of recreational drug period because drugs themselves are poisons. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, coffee's fine. It's like, you know, if you're a coffee drinker, that's fine. If you're somebody who has candy once in a while, that's fine. It's like, you know, you're somebody who has sugar occasionally, but really anything beyond that, there are significant risks. I mean, I mean, I, I'm i somebody who drinks alcohol in moderation. I'm somebody who's never had a problem with alcohol in my life. Like I said before, if I have to stop drinking alcohol because of my fatty liver, I will stop drinking alcohol. It's like, you know, but alcohol is certainly something you do not want to start. It's like, you know, you do not want to start it if you're not somebody who drinks alcohol. Just because you turn 21, it's like you do not want to start drinking alcohol. It's, it's a very, very, very bad thing to start. Mm. I mean, even cigars and pipes, it's not a good thing to start. I mean, I would not encourage in 
any way, shape, or form uh, somebody starting. I mean, do I, <clears throat> you know, do I support somebody's choice to start if they're 21? Of course I do. It's like, you know, uh, they're an adult. It's like, you know, they can go to war and die for their country. Uh, they can be executed at 18 years old. It's like, of course I support their choice. It's like, you know, of course I do. <clears throat> I mean, if somebody who's, who's, who's 18 or 21 wants to smoke, of course I do. It's like, you know, uh, if you have a valid photo ID, you want to take the risk? Of course I do, because it's like, you know, if you can be executed in the frickin' electric chair, you can be, you can vote, you can sign up for the military and get your leg blown off, of course you have the right, it's like, you know, but I'm not going to encourage you, I can't, I can encourage you, it's like, you know, of course I don't encourage you, it's like, you know, it's a, it's a terrible thing to start, it's like, you know, uh, <clears throat> I mean, yeah, I mean, and, and anything beyond tobacco, I mean, pot is one thing, but I mean, <clears throat> like I said, anything hardcore like crack, meth, heroin, coke, acid, shrooms, I just do not even remotely, even remotely encourage even going near that stuff. You know, don't hang around people who do that junk. It's like, you can get into a shitload of trouble. It's like, you know, do not even remotely go near that stuff. I mean, you see that stuff? You, you run the hell away, you don't go back. It's like, don't hang around people who do drugs. It's like, you know, drugs are bad. Drugs are bad, okay, okay, okay. So, from South Park, it's like, you know, yeah, it's a terrible, I mean, drugs are just bad in general. It's like, you know. So, anyway, yeah, so. So that's a story of how I started uh, <coughs> smoking cigars, smoking pipes. And another thing people may ask is like, do you have any interest in quitting? Will you ever quit, you know? And kind of the thing I've, I've kind of decided is if I ever did, God forbid, develop something like cancer, then I would probably quit. I would, because I'm, I would value my life and I would quit. Same thing with the fatty liver. Yeah, it's like, you know, if my doctor says, you know what, Evan, you really gotta start, stop drinking entirely. Well, I'm gonna stop drinking entirely. It's like, you know, but, this video, again, is not to glorify or encourage anybody uh, in any way, shape, or form to start using this crap, you know, because it is crap, you know. But anyway, that's how I, you know, started uh, smoking cigars and pipes. That's my story. This video is almost an hour long. Can't believe that. And uh, yeah. Anyway, this video is too long. I'm going to sign off, sign off now. Pretty fucking cool. Bye.